Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're taking a look at configuring Syslog server on Cisco routers. First things first, let's define what Syslog is. Basically, Syslog is an industry standard client server protocol. It's used to send Syslog messages. You might refer to these as error messages from a sender to a quote unquote receiver, basically from a client to a server. Uh, using UDP in the Cisco world by default, it's going to use UDP on port 514. It's typically used for computer system management and security auditing, and that's one of the big reasons why you want to have a syslog server in your network is for computer system management, which I'm going to say includes troubleshooting network issues, as well as for uh, security auditing, because it's going to keep a log of changes that occurred on your devices. Syslog was born in the uh, Unix environment, so that's why you're going to see stuff like Syslog daemons. Also, I've worked for a number of places that the Syslog server basically was just a Unix box because they'll just run the Syslog daemon on that box and will just send Syslog traps to that box. So there are commercial and free pieces of software out there that are really good, but a lot of places just go ahead and use a uh, Unix box. So logging and syslog are going to be synonymous terms throughout this lesson. On a Cisco router, and of course this works on switches as well, system logging messages or syslog messages or system error messages, whichever term you choose to use, they're controlled by the logging process and that process is going to distribute these syslog messages to various destinations based on the configuration. And I'm not going to go into explicit detail on these different destinations uh, because there's another lesson that does that. Basically logging buffer that's your local logging on your device. So on your Cisco router, if you enable logging buffered and you do a show log, that's going to show the logging messages there. And that keeps a history of the syslog messages up until the time that the uh, buffer is full, there's a reload, or they're cleared. Logging console sends the syslog messages to all available TTY lines. So basically your console line and your... Uh, VTY lines as well. Logging monitor sends it to all available terminal lines and logging host is the one we're going to take a look at today and that's going to send syslog messages to a remote host. And the bold terms there, logging buffered, logging console, blah blah blah, those are the actual configuration lines that you will input. And the nice thing about logging is that all or 99.9% of .9 the commands that you need to learn will all begin with logging. So it's pretty easy to take a look at the commands that are available. Unlike, you know, most features that you need to configure in Cisco routers, they don't all start with the same keyword. As I just mentioned, logging host is going to be the command that you're going to configure to send your syslog messages to a syslog slurver, slurver, to a syslog server slash syslog daemon slash syslog receiver, whatever term. We're going to use syslog server going forward. And you can see here there's a ton of options there, but don't let that scare you because all you really need to do is enter the IP address or if you're using DNS, you might be able to use a host name of your syslog server that you want to send these messages to. So in this case, logging host and then the IP address that's all you need. All the rest of that stuff is optional and a lot of it will vary uh, based on platform and iOS version. Okay, so this comes up a little bit. Is it logging or is it logging host? So do you need to enter logging host followed by the IP address or do you can you simply get away with just saying logging uh, followed by the IP address? And the answer is yes. <laughs> They're both the same thing basically. So you can see here I entered logging host followed by the IP address. When I did a uh, show run and just included all the commands that had logging in them, you see it actually showed up in the running config as logging and then the IP address. And do the same thing with logging. It'll take that command. You don't need to put in the host and it will show up the same way. The difference is basically, I believe this is going to be depreciated. What the practical difference is, is that when you enter logging, and then the IP address and then um, hit the iOS help with the question mark, your only option is to hit return. Whereas if you put in logging host, you've got some extra options like the ones we saw on the last slide. Again, depending on iOS version and platform. In this case, I can specify XML. And if I had specified XML and whatever arguments went with that, if I went and issued the uh, do show run include logging, it would show up as logging host IP address XML blah blah blah. Um, this is trivial, but you'll see some people that say, oh, you don't need host, you can just do logging. True, true. Logging host is probably more correct, but you can get away with either one. So the alpha and the omega of configuring syslog server on a Cisco device is that you just need to put in the command logging host and then the uh, IP address, and you're done. That's it. 
for reals. That's it. That's all you really need to do. Now, we're not going to end the lesson here because you're probably going to want to tweak a few things depending on your environment. But this is, honest to God, this is the basic configuration. That's all you truly need to enable sending your syslog messages from your device to a syslog server. The first of the syslog options we're going to take a look at is facility. And the command for that is logging facility and then you'll have a number of different choices. Uh, you can go ahead and read this but basically know that the default is local 7 and what this is is um, each syslog messages includes a priority value at the beginning of the text. That value is from 0 to 191 and it it's made up of the facility value and a level value. So this is something from Unix. And you can see here, priority equals facility times 8 plus level. You can read this. Not really that important for our purposes. What is important is this last bit here. Uh, local 0 through local 7 are not used by Unix and are traditionally used by networking equipment. Cisco routers, for example, use local 6 or local 7. And as we'll see in the next slide, it defaults to local 7. And here we can see logging facility is the command and we're invoking the Cisco IOS help with the question mark. And there's a grip of these choices, but the ones we really want to look at are these local 0 through local 7 because those are the ones that are traditionally associated with networking gear and Cisco devices, at least the ones I've seen, default to local 7. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check with your syslog server administrator and verify which syslog facility you should use. Uh, depending on the syslog server, a syslog facility mismatch may mean that the syslog messages will not be accepted on the syslog server. Now that's the way I had learned what facility was. Basically, it was a setting that had to be matched on the uh, server and the device. Not really true, and we'll see that in the next slide. More likely, the syslog messages will be miscategorized on the syslog server because it's going to be expecting local 7 as the logging facility for these network gear. And if you put user, which it expects to be coming from a Unix box or mail or something else, it's going to just be confusing to that server. So again, when you set this up, um, local 7 is the default and should be good to go. But get a hold of your syslog server admin and make sure that you set the facility setting to his or her specifications. Okay, and this slide just takes a look at the Kiwi syslog server under modify in the setup area you can change the default priority and you can see here priority is made up of the facility and the level okay so here's what I was talking about this is a QE syslog server manager and I had gone in and cleared the counters which will generate a level 5 syslog message we'll get to the levels in just a bit here so you can see the priority is the combination of the facility which in this case would be the default of local 7 and then the logging level which I, like I said we'll get to in a bit here notice it's synonymous for level 5 this first um, syslog message came in with a priority of local 7 notice. Uh, then I went ahead and changed the logging facility to mail, uh, something that it's not. This is obviously not a mail server because it has no balls. <laughs> uh, uh, anywho, uh, so it did receive this message. It, it received it from this router when I cleared the counters once again and invoked another syslog message. It's just that, that priority came in as mail.notice. So I suppose this could depend upon the syslog server or the setup on that server but what I wanted to show that it was that it did not necessarily mean that that syslog server would not get the syslog messages. It's just going to really be a pain in the ass for the syslog server because it's going to think that this has something to do with mail which it doesn't. So generally just keep it to local 7 though like I said in the last slide go ahead and touch base with your syslog server administrator to see what he or she 